Hey everybody, this is Sierra from the Local History and Genealogy Department at the Kenton County Public Library. And today um, we are going to be talking about how you can find your family history in property records. Um, this is, I think, a really fun topic because we don't always think of looking at property records as sources of genealogical information, but there is tons of genealogical information in property records. Um, there are all kinds of clues about family members, family connections, um, important life events. There's all kinds of stuff that we often miss in property records that can help us tell our ancestors' stories. So today I'm going to dive into this and look at a couple different sources and maybe think outside the box about what property records are. Okay, so property records. Like the first thing that we normally think of when we think of property records are probably, um, you know, land records, deeds, but there's all kinds of stuff in these records that we should be looking for. Um, the names of our families, their makeup, you know, siblings, parents, grandparents, cousins, aunts and uncles. Um, the dates of important life events, so a lot of times property records can tell us when a ancestor was, um, maybe has passed, or maybe when an ancestor married, or, um, you know, something like along those lines of when someone might receive property or inherit property. Property records could also sometimes tell us about their job or occupation, um, depending on where they live, if they're living in town or, um, you know, out in the country, they might be working land, there might be clues about what kind of, um, you know, were they doing agriculture, what kind of crops, or were they doing, um, were they raising cattle, was it more for grazing? And then property records can also tell us when families moved, they can tell us when a family moved in, when a family moved around, or when a family moved out. So um, that's another good genealogical information to look for in property records. And then it also can tell us information about the communities that our ancestors lived in um, and help us find clues for other genealogical records. So um, let's kind of like dive into this some more. Um, so of course, when we all think about property records, we all think like the first thing that you're probably thinking is deeds. Yes, because deeds are the main type of property records that are available at the courthouse. They um, they tell us, you know, when a piece of land was bought and sold over time, how much it was bought and sold for, uh, the names of the owners, the previous owners, sometimes also tells us the heirs of the previous owners. So property records and deeds are a great place to start, and we will definitely talk about those. But I want to also broaden what we consider the definition of property records, because if we do that, we can look at another, some more variety of resources, and those include things like city directories, Sanborn maps, census records, and newspapers. These are all untraditional sources of property records, but they all contain great um, information about property records, but also genealogical information as well. Okay, so the deeds. Um, deeds are the first place you should stop if you are doing any type of property records research. But these are also great if you're looking for genealogical information. Um, in Kentucky, so since we're in Kent County, in Kentucky, the deeds are available at the county clerk's office. And um, you'll want to basically kind of remember your county formation because deeds stay where they originate, not where the property is now. So in the case of Kenton County, if a deed was created before 1840, it will still be in Campbell County's records. So keep that in mind. Also, because I, we're in Kent County, I also want to just point out that Covington and Independence both have separate deed records because we have two courthouses generating records at the same time. So make sure that you check both courthouses for those deed records. One thing I do want to talk about, and I will talk about this next month more in my um, video about the gems of the Family Search catalog, is that Family Search has a wealth of deed records available in their catalog. And you should really go through the catalog and do a search for the county of where your ancestors are from and look for those deed records. 
I highly recommend going through Family Search, and I will dig into this more next month um, in, our, in my next video. Um, but I want to get back to this deed record here because I found this deed at the Covington Courthouse, um, Deed Book 7, page 245. This is one of those ones that it came from the Covington Courthouse, but I got this on Family Search. And when I was reading through it, I was looking for an example for this PowerPoint about how deeds can show us all of these great um, family information. And this deed um, tells us the names of all of these family members. So we have Charles, Charlotte, James, Josephine, James, Elvira, John, Eliza, and David. Wonderful. All these guys signed off on this deed. They're all part of the same family unit. Well, when you read the deed language and you really get into it, you can see that it tells you the genealogical information of all of these family members. So it tells me that Charles um, Clarkson and Charlotte, his wife. So now I know who, how all of these family members are related. So in this case, it's the father, Charles, and his sons and his son's wives. Um, and these are all heirs relinquishing claim to this property. This is an amazing deed, just for this, just for the genealogical data alone. Another thing that I want to point out about this deed is that he had our, this whole family, when I went in to do more research on them, had moved to St. Louis, Missouri, and they were just settling up property in here in Covington. So it also tells me that genealogical clue that all of this family is now in Missouri. And I know that I need to start looking in Missouri for this family. So um, that is another important genealogical clue and genealogical data source that you might not have thought of if you looked at property records. So this was a great deed for this. Um, I wish all deeds were this helpful, especially with telling you all of the names of the heirs, all of the family members, how they're related. But sometimes you get lucky and you have a deed like this and it also tells you where they went out west. Um, so take advantage of deeds, look through deed books. This is, it can be a little bit tedious because deed books are not um, usually indexed as in you can just keyword or name search them yet. But you have to kind of scroll through them like microfilm. But if you have the time and there's an index, go through those, those deed books and look and see if you can find um, these older deeds and deed records and the genealogical data that is inside of them. So I, this one's just so cool. I can't believe I got how lucky someone would be if they were looking for this family because they knew what happened to them. Okay, so now we're going to look at more untraditional or what I like to call broadened sources of property information and property records. So city directories are more modern. They definitely, um, if you haven't already done city directory searches for a family, I highly recommend that you do it because every you can get a good idea of not only where they lived every year, but also the makeup of the family every year. Um, you can find things out about them, such as their businesses, or their occupations, their jobs, um, spousal information. A lot of times you can find other people living in the same household, or if you get really lucky, people living next door or down the street who are potentially related. Um, so let's kind of dig into this Jansen record from the 1938 to 39 Covington City Directory. So when you look at the Jansen surname, you get a good a good amount of people that are living in Covington that year. Um, the Jansen Hardware Company lists Albert, Clarence, um, Edward, all as being part of the hardware company. So you could assume that they're somehow either related, um, like as in father and son or brothers, or maybe potentially also, don't forget to look at like potentially uncles and cousins, but you can tell that this is a family unit. Um, you can also go through the individual entries and look for them to see where they're living. And sometimes they um, will have the same addresses. So Edward B has a residence at 1345 Hermes, as well as Henry A. So you can you can make um, you can make inferences about the relationships from these families by looking at these city directories. Another thing that I want to point out is that you have a lot of these, you have a, a couple of these families that are all living on Hermes Avenue, 
which is a good thing to investigate as a source of um, potential relatives if you're not if you're trying to find as much information out about a family, especially if you're starting out. So like Edward lives at 1345 Hermes Avenue. And then when you go down here, and I'll put my mouse over it so you can see what I'm talking about. So here's Edward, 1345 Hermes Avenue. And then you go down here and there's John Jay and Eliza and they live at 1232 Hermes. So make sure you look at those family names of people who live down the street next door. Cause here's another one. Look, you have Lucas who lives at 1343 Hermes, which is probably right next door to Edwards. So you'll want to make sure you, oh, sorry. You want to make sure that you write down all of those names and all of those potential relationships because those might be sources of genealogical information later. Especially if you're trying to work backwards, you now have a whole family unit that you can look for genealogical data on. So um, see directories, while we don't think of them as necessarily property records, they are properties because they do tell us where our ancestors live, but they also tell us all of this wonderful genealogical data about them. So please go through city directories um, and, and get to know your ancestors through those directories and um, over, the, over time, because you'll also be able to do kind of like a timeline. And I love timelines. I talk about timelines a lot, but timelines are really great. City directories are a great way to fill in gaps. Um, and they also can show you maybe when a family, if a family falls off a city directory, it could tell you maybe they moved or if someone passed away. So um, it also can tell you marriage in the case of your female ancestors. So pay attention to city directories, go through them with a fine, um, fine comb and really get to know where your ancestors lived and worked over time. This is really, city directories, I would say, also help you with that really frustrating 1890s gap. So if they lived in town and there's a city directory, take advantage of those 18, between 1880 and 1900 city directories that are available. Okay, Sanborn maps. I love Sanborn maps. Um, maps are wonderful in general. Like, I don't know anyone that doesn't love maps, but these Sanborn maps, um, well, they're fire insurance maps. So they were used by um, the fire department to get a idea of the size of a building, the building materials, how many floors, windows. These also tell you a wealth of genealogical data about the family that you're looking for. Um, you can not only just find like, you can see over here on Third Street, there's all these dwellings. It tells you that like, for instance, in this case, that this dwelling had two different numbers, which is a big clue that you need to do your city directory searches twice um, and figure out when that um, house switched over. Um, but it also can tell you things about their neighborhood. Um, Sanborn maps are a great way to go through and kind of look and see what's nearby, especially if you're having trouble locating other genealogical resources. So look at the Sanborn maps and say, well, down the street is this Catholic church and my family's Catholic. Maybe they went to that church and I should look for their records there. Or if you are looking for school records, Sanborn maps also indicate schools. So you could look at the surrounding neighborhood and say, well, they were near 12th district school. They went, we should look for it to see if there are records for 12th district school and my family. Um, it's a really great opportunity also to get to know the businesses and the manufacturers that are surrounding your ancestors' properties. So you can um, get some ideas of maybe potential employers. So you could do some searches that way based on what you know about the family. Um, Sanborn maps are just, there's so much stuff in these that you could use to help you track down the genealogical data about your family. Um, but really keep in mind and make sure that you look for those churches, schools, um, businesses, all of that stuff can help you really dig into the genealogical data about your family and help you get um, more information. Also, these Sanborn maps, um, so if you have a Kenton County Public Library card, the Sanborn maps are available on our website. Um, they're in black and white. If you are looking for Sanborn maps in other areas outside of Kentucky, the Library of Congress has digitized um, Sanborn, their Sanborn map collection. It is not complete, but they have um, they have a ton of Sanborn maps on their website. And I would encourage you to go through their website and look for Sanborn maps in other states and um, other places and um, see what is available. 
the Kentucky Sanborn maps that we have, they start in the late 1890s, and then they go, there's a, the last one, I think it was edited in like 49 or 54. Um, every state is going to have different um, spans of Sanborn maps, so just keep that in mind. Also, the Library of Congress has digitized their Sanborn maps in color. So that is where I got this color copy of the Sanborn map. So if you found someone in our Sanborn map database, or you know, like you want to get a copy, a nice copy of it, and the Library of Congress one is also available in color if you'd like that as an option as well. So these are beautiful maps and they have so much information in them. So really, um, pay attention to the Sanborn maps. Another thing, um, we've also, Sanborn maps also notate cemeteries. I forgot to mention cemeteries, but you can sometimes find the nearest local cemetery and sometimes larger family cemeteries are noted on Sanborn maps, but um, usually it's like the main city cemeteries. And for like, for example, like Highland Cemetery or Linden Grove Cemetery here in Campbell or in here in Kenton County. So, um, Look for that to find up more geological information. All right. Census records. So we don't usually think of census records as property records, and that's fine. But for this, I really wanted you guys to kind of think outside the box because genealogy is often about thinking outside the box, especially if you've been researching a family and you're stuck, or if you're new to researching and you just haven't had an opportunity to see all of the data that's in these census records. Um, so the later census records do tell you um, more data about the property that someone lives at. So it'll tell you the street, the house number. Um, it's, more, it's very similar to the kind of like the city directory listing. The earlier census records give you a general boundary of a ward and then you just have to kind of infer where your ancestor lived in that ward. Um, so if they're not as, I guess, they're helpful, but they're not as helpful as the more modern ones. Um, so keep that in mind. Like for this example here, this census record came from East 4th Street. So you can find out about, you know that the family was living at 11 East 4th Street. Taking the property and then from the census record and then also looking at the other genealogical data in the census record. So you have not only things like relationships because you have a head of household listed you have all of the, how everyone in the household is related you also have things like age birth location um, marital status education income um, there's all kinds of genealogical data hidden in these census records and you really should just go through column by column and read all of that information and there are tons of blank um, census forms online that you can print out and really print one of those out and write write your ancestors census data into those forms because it, it slows you down a little bit and it helps you analyze all of the data that's in these census records. Um, but census records are so helpful for, for genealogy and they're also property records. Um, I also wanted to mention that um, we are now a year out. Uh, yesterday was exactly a year, but we're today, um, even less than a year, uh, the 1950 U.S. federal census will be released next April. So that is super exciting. Everyone has been waiting for that 1950 census. Um, so mark your calendars. Uh, it should be released April 1st, 2022. Um, if you were around 10 years ago when the 1940 census came out, you'll know that Usually the images are released first and then the indexing will come much later, but you will be, you should be able to browse visually the census um, starting next April. So um, make sure you mark your calendars. It's really exciting. Um, you know, if you're into genealogy and you're kind of a nerd, you know, we're all like, we've got time countdowns going. So um, yes, just make sure you make a note of that because that 1950 census is coming and we're all looking for that data. So that's exciting. All right, newspapers, another out of the box property record, um, non-traditional source of information, but newspapers are just as important and helpful for property records and genealogical data. So, um, 
you can look through newspapers and search for like the address of the property that you're that you're researching where your ancestors lived you can search for them by their name in the newspapers um, if they're digitized and indexed um, but you you might also want to use some keywords like land transfers house sales real estate um auctions building permits i really enjoy finding when people are delinquent on their real estate taxes in these records um especially when they're fighting over like a large inheritance and they don't pay the property taxes um and because nobody has officially inherited the property yet um anything kind of scandalous like that uh you should look for things like new subdivisions estate settlements um there's all kinds of like building permits. There's all kinds of records that are hidden in newspapers that are related to property and genealogy. Um, what I really thought was great about this Covington real estate uh, newspaper clipping was that this one says like Bernadine Ware was widow to Rose, I think it's Ross B. Stroh. So, and there's like, there's, it's telling you the relationship of the person who's settling or transferring the property, um, like Clarence Company and William Schott, executor of the estate of William Reedland Sr. So it's telling you how they're, in, how they are related to the owner of the property. In this case, if they're an executor, Mr. Reedland has passed away and they're settling up his estate. So that's another clue, genealogical clue. Um, so look at through these coming to, like these real estate and property transfer records in the newspaper to find information about your your ancestors and your family. Um, another thing that people don't tend to look for in these newspapers that, um, especially because we're still getting more modern newspapers uploaded and digitized all the time, um, are house pictures. Uh, this one was a great one because it was from the um, Campbell County Winters Lane, and this one came out of the uh, 1960s, I believe. So you have a picture of your house from the paper and you, when it was new, and that could tell you when the family also moved into the property. So look for those advertisements for subdivisions, the address of the property, maybe to even just do a generic name search for just the name of the street that it's on and not necessarily the number and keep and then just kind of go from there but newspapers are filled with genealogical and property information and they're kind of an out there source but they can be super helpful for your research okay so that was my presentation um if you have questions about anything that i went over on these slides or um, you need help with one of these resources please reach out and contact us we're happy to um, help you. You can email um, the local history and genealogy department at history at kentlibrary.org. You can also call us at 859-962-4070 and we are available on the web at kentonlibrary.org slash genealogy. Um, if you have any questions about property research or doing your genealogy, we're happy to help. Um, and thank you for watching and I hope you guys have a great day.